Hi everyone and welcome to your weekly energy update, a general tarot guidance taking a look at how this week's energies are likely to influence our lives individually and collectively. Well, before I get into the details, I would just like to say that I have redone this spread several times and it didn't really help. And I'm kind of facing the situation where I don't even want to look at this. I don't even want to know. Most of you probably know that we have an upcoming solar eclipse around Saturday. And it isn't just about astrology. You know, every ancient civilization, basically everyone, even those people who were not notorious for wisdom, knew that eclipses are big. Things change. That is when the spirit world, the divine, everything that is beneath the veil is that much closer and things happen and usually big things happen. Now as an astrologer I can only see the pattern basically which can play out in so very many different ways. So in my horoscope of course I wanted to see the more positive side of this energy which I'm absolutely sure that it's going to be positive and really, really helpful, especially for the long term in our lives individually. But collectively, it might be a different picture because the cards are not telling me that my prediction is correct. My cards are telling me that it's going to be really difficult. There is something bound to happen which is really not a pretty picture. Which kind of means, you know, this is a south node eclipse. South node is karma, the past. All that we have done as a species because this is the collective expression. And chances are, well, we are going to reap what we kind of planted. And it's not really love and light. So, if you don't want to know, please just close YouTube right now and don't listen any further. Because I really don't want to be just another TV channel spreading fear, to be honest with you. But since this is what is shown to me, I can't lie, so I have to say what I see. So first of all, what I'm picking up from here is that either this new coronavirus variant is really bad and it has the potential to actually make a lot of people ill. The five of coins is the card of illness or scarcity, poverty, material trouble and material can include the physical body as well. But perhaps it might be the Six of Swords reverse that might inconvenience people because that means reverse progress. So something that we really progressed with collectively, for example, like opening businesses and people just getting back to their lives, to their routines, making progress even materially. I'm not saying that they're going to close things down, but there's a threat, like a real threat that that might be the next step. But of course, it's going to cause a lot of conflict, the seven of wands. It's going to cause strength in opposition. So protests or people really not tolerating that in any way, shape or form. And possibly physical violence is one of the forms here. But the problem truly is that it's actually dangerous. So I'm not sure if there even is a solution or a resolution to this. And even a bigger problem that it can even mutate further if that even makes sense. So this is just the beginning. As I said, there are neither going to be perhaps restrictions just yet as in closing everything down lockdown but they might voice this that it's really really bad and we have to kind of do something about this but that will cause a lot of conflict and basically another expression of this energy is fear of poverty fear of really losing everything because you can imagine if Let's say someone had a business 
and they had to close down or suspend and stuff like that. So they had a lot of losses and then they started recovering and it just got back on track and they closed it again. Well, it's not going to be a happy ending. And this maybe won't affect the whole uh, international stage all at once. But this is where trouble is going to start beginning to brew. There are going to be areas heavily affected by this. So, no, it's not very good news. Now, of course, the four of wands reversed with the king of coins reversed. And the Eight of Coins, well, this is basically like a natural conclusion. Economy problems, ups and downs, well, it it doesn't really have to be bad like loss. But the problem is a big instability. And it's more like the psychological instability. Because if there is a risk of, you know, big disruption, well, that will already cause a lot of problems. And on the other hand, this can also represent some disruptions or maybe a change in alliances in international trade. For example, two big countries or two big nations who are allies to one another, economically speaking. So there is a trade, there is agreement and stuff like that might change their minds one way or another for one reason or another. And even though this will not affect anything yet, there are going to be discussions or there are going to be renegotiations and this might echo later on. So it's none of this is not really immediately this week, but this is where it's just beginning. And... People like economists and the specialists in economy will already know based on what they're talking, the discussions, the plans, etc. that they have to work on a plan B. They have to work on something to offer everyone, so basically the world itself, a certain kind of stability. Even when the worst case scenario happens, Like, for example, trade between China and another bigger nation. For some reason, I'm picking up China here specifically. Not sure what can happen or how, because I'm really, really not good at money, economy, and all the finances and all this stuff. But something is bound to happen where another player or maybe the global community wants to break up its alliance with China or sanctions like a punishment or something which might destabilize trade. Or it can also be like a bigger Chinese company might be in some kind of trouble and it might need bailing out. It can take so many forms of expression But the problem is that this king of coins is reversed, so it doesn't offer security for the future, so it's scary a little bit. Then we have the ten of swords, clarified by the five of wands and nine of swords. Well, those of you who kind of know tarot, or just a tiny bit, I don't even think I have to explain further. You can just have your own lucky guess of what this could possibly mean. The Ten of Swords can be seen internationally, collectively, as a massive reality check that something doesn't work anymore, or we failed at something, we have to accept defeat, but not necessarily, you know, as in within a war or something like that, but as in we cannot solve a problem, or we mismanaged something, or it can also be like a truth coming out, a a different perspective or a more objective take on something that has happened not so long ago and it's not a pretty picture as in everyone failed or everyone made the wrong choices and everyone here is the international community, so countries, nations, world leaders, etc. And it's going to cause a lot of conflict, it's going to cause a lot of battles Not just legal battles, but perhaps people will have enough and this 
can act like a second wave of protests everywhere on, in the world. And this Nine of Swords, it's going to be scary. It's not going to be, you know, like the heroic kind of protests. It can be scary. On the other hand, unfortunately, this, this is the mildest expression of what this energy can mean collectively. Because the mo more extreme expression is like a gesture like of religious fanaticism, an act of terrorism, or some symbolic, violent act that will really rub the salt in, if, if that makes sense. So it will shock us, it will unsettle us, it, it will just simply, you know, make us feel disgusted that we are part of the species, if this makes sense. And I'm so sorry to even say this or include something like this in a reading or in something which has to be more inspirational. But at the end of the day, this isn't like a punishment or of any kind. This is just like a mirror. This is how and who we are right now as a species. Of course, many people are different. Many people would love nothing more than a perfect world full of peace and serenity and acceptance. But, you know, not everyone. Someone or something is really fighting for survival, but where that specific organization or group of people or whatever this is, is not, you know, the good guy, as in like a terrorist organization, for example, if they're fighting for their own survival to keep up their fanatic ways and, you know, stuff like that, well, it's not going to be pretty. I'm not saying that a lot of lives are going to be lost or anything like that, but the gesture is going to be pretty painful. Then we have the devil reversed and ace of wands and five of swords reversed. Something is going to come to daylight about a world leader or a person in a very big position, for example, like a multimillionaire, the head of a big, big company, head of big pharma, leader of a big institution, for example, the, something with, that has to do with the EU or a big country. And I'm not saying that they're going to fall, but they might be heavily contested at this time. Something that comes to daylight, it doesn't even matter if it's true or false, it's just going to act like an ace of wands. It's going to stir spirit, it's going to stir aggression, it's going to stir opposition. And people will demand that that person steps down. But as I said, all of this sounds very scary, but at the same time, as I said, this is like a mirror, so we have to learn from this, we have to accept this, and this is how we change the future, that we say enough is enough, this cannot possibly go on like this. Let me just give you an example. Like the 9-11 events, it was horrible, horrific, like truly the worst of the worst, but it did change a lot of legislation and, you know, the security custom things at the airports and air travel, and that in itself might have, might have saved a lot of lives. And it also showed the world that terrorists and religious fanaticism cannot exist, not only in our future, but not even in the present. So it did a lot of things that ultimately lead to progress, lead to a much greater truth, because if we don't want to keep that as something specific to our collective, as in our species, then we have to eliminate that. And every single eclipse or very big karmic energy amongst anything else acts like a mirror. It shows us exactly where we are and what we deserve. And when I say deserve, it's really almost mathematical. A leads to B, then to C, and, you know, quantum. Every action has a reaction. So, you know, that's why when we get something really bad, we kind of deserve it. And if we don't want to deserve it, we have to change the equation. So it, it's really that simple. 
Now let's get to the individual expression of this energy, which is, of course, totally different. Now the first spread can be simply interpreted as you resisting to all the challenges. The Six of Swords reversed can represent that you're cutting off information and you're minding your own business, fighting your own battles, Five of Coins healing yourself, healing your value system, truly embodying self-care, self-love, healthy detachment. So this can be a truly good expression because it just means you're coping, you're doing okay. You're not allowing that which shouldn't be in your life to have a greater impact on you. And ultimately, the Seven of Wands may not be an easy energy, but it is victorious, it is triumphant, it is where you are more than capable of dealing with any challenge, obstacle that comes in your way. Now, the other spread that's even more positive, because personally, the King of Coins reversed can represent a material change. That is where your daily routines and how your life is normally, especially income-wise and your daily physical activities, can have a big upgrade because that eight of coins represents that something that you're working on is paying off and that is changing your life for the better. And the four of ones, well, someone who might be looking to change locations, move into a new house and like a shared accommodation or like move to a totally different uh, environment or something to do with the rent, that is really, really positive because it means you can do it and your work or whatever you're good at, what, whatever means you found to accomplish this, it is working. It is a working progress. It might not, you know happen this week, but you might receive certain news communication that if you keep it up, you will definitely get there. So this part is really, really good. It simply means that the life change that you're working on is not only possible, but you're already in it doing it. So strike the iron while it's hot. Now, this third spread with the Ten of Swords and the Nine of Swords, and the Five of Wands, well, this doesn't necessarily have to mean depression, or fear, or anxiety, even though I'm sure that for some people that will be the case, but the Five of Wands there is actually good, because you're fighting it, so it's not ruling your life, it is not enough to defeat you, but on the other hand, this can also have a very positive expression, you speak up for, or you stand up for yourself. You don't shy away from an inevitable conflict and you make yourself heard or you assert yourself even if it's difficult. And for some people it can be very difficult because maybe who is opposing you or who is provoking you is like a family member or someone who you love. So you have to basically express yourself and assert your sovereign will even if that is scary, even if that ends a phase in your life, for example, the end of a relationship, the end of a job, the end of something, this Ten of Swords, but you know that something new is coming, and chances are that's not just a theory, you already have something new in your life, where you already have a plan B, so you have the strength and the courage to assert yourself in any way, shape or form, and the most positive expression of this, someone's depression, struggles, being defeated by everything and everyone, that phase in life ends. Suddenly, unexpectedly, the battle will no longer be there. Something will happen, especially with the Eclipse, a fated energy that will simply free you from this. So the Ten of Swords can be the most favored and positive expression it is basically the defeat of the defeat. And finally, the devil reversed with the ace of wands and five of swords reversed is really, really good. The devil reversed some kind of freedom where you have the power, you have the control. Ace of wands can be either an opportunity or simply knowing what you want, what you desire. 
and having the strength to accomplish it, to make a choice, take an action. And the Five of Swords reversed. Well, you have a certain kind of clarity where other people cannot sabotage you or mislead you, but neither will you do it to yourself as an overthinking and, you know, our usual mental, mental sabotage that we do to ourselves. For other people, it will be a truth coming out about a person like a work colleague, a boss, a manager, good friend, an ally who might not have been that very honest with you. But it will come as almost like a divine help. You coincidentally beholding the truth and that will give you a lot of power and that will put you in a position of superiority. So either way, personally, this expression is really, really good. For some people, it can even be the freedom that they have been waiting for for so long just pops up in their lives through some kind of unexpected, unforeseeable opportunity, that Ace of Wands. Or simply it can be in shape and form of like a stranger, a person who they cannot even trust because they don't know them, but that person offers them something unexpectedly, and you just say, I'll take it. And you go with that, and that will lead to somewhere really, really good. And finally, as Divine Guidance, the Three of Wands and the Ten of Swords. Again, the Ten of Swords. Well, this is kind of simple because it means that that which is disappearing from your life or that which you have to put an end to right now, as in probably in this December, that will open the doors for you, not just to freedom, but to an authenticity where you are actually living your story as subjective as it may be, that is exactly the goal, the subjectivity. Sometimes, you know, if you want to live your truth, well, it, it, it will always be subjective. Seeking a greater truth than your own, especially regarding who you are, how you are, what makes you happy, what doesn't make you happy, that is self-defeating. When you want to know yourself, you have to be subjective. There is no other way. So for some people, it's going to be exactly this. You let go of wanting to know everything. You let go of standards or you terminate certain things in your life, which are kind of forcing you to maybe put up an act, to not express who it is that you are, or forcing you any way, shape or form to not be yourself. You put an end to that and there you have the doors of freedom open and slowly and surely you're definitely going to get there, especially within the next three months. So what the universe is saying, don't be afraid of terminations because right now that is a big, big blessing and you have to be very brave and just trust your worldview. You have to trust your own philosophies, your own take on everything. Because the truth right now is only inside and not really outside because it's way too turbulent on the outside to even want to make sense of it. So this is what the cards have to say for today. Again, I apologize that this wasn't the most positive and inspirational reading. And also remember, it's a solar eclipse. That means it's a new moon. So plant that seed of intention. Plant it as intensely as you possibly can because in the next six months it might come to fruition and Sagittarius energy is exactly that sign where the arrow can hit bullseye. So please don't be shy to dream big. Thank you once again. Wish everyone a blessed eclipse. Until next time, bye for now.